Hi, it is so good to be here with Conan and Andy and you. Yes. It is also so good to be in 2020. For me personally, really good to be in 2020. 2019, not the best year of my life. <laughs> I got divorced in 2019. Oh, thank you, thank you. And a couple, and a couple claps. <laughs> you know, I will say it does make me a bit of a pioneer, you know, a gay divorcee. We've, we haven't even had that long enough to realize that it rhymes. <laughs> That's hilarious. We could have been laughing about that for a longer period of time, but we didn't have our rights was really the main obstacle. Um, this is tough for me to admit to you as an artist, but my parents are together. <laughs> my folks are together. I come from a stable home. Why am I doing this? My folks are in love. They're best friends. They've been together for 50 years. Their bodies are morphing, so they look more like each other every day. <laughs> they share one pair of clogs for gardening. <laughs> That's what I'm from, and I'm getting a divorce. It feels, it feels unfair. I will also say, you know, I felt, I felt like I lost an identity. I really didn't know what to do with myself. It's not just sad, it's disorienting. I mean, in 2019, I took a spoon carving class. <laughs> that is what it is like getting a divorce. You're just shouting into the void, do I like to carve spoons? <laughs> what do I like? 2019, the year of my life when I put an Elka-Seltzer into a LaCroix. <laughs> the minimum number of bubbles I needed, I needed to leave the house that day. I dyed my hair in 2019. I never dyed my hair in my life, but I dyed my hair. It looked amazing. I went white, it was all white. It looked so good. But then I had to add some color back in because men would not stop congratulating me on winning the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, no, I bow now, but that is a real thing from my actual life. It was very difficult to be in airports. <laughs> You know, when we fought for marriage equality, we went with love is love. That's what we went with as a community, our message. I wish we had said love is love, but queer shit is specific. <laughs> I wish we had gone with that because I, I feel like I've been in my trauma and I've been having to do education. Like a lot of my straight friends said to me, oh my God, you're going through it. Put on a breakup song. Okay, sure. But there is not a Beyonce song, for instance, that applies to my life right now. Do you know how lonely it is to exist off the edge of the Beyonce catalog? <laughs> She's got instructions for what you're supposed to do in terms of a breakup. You're supposed to, you invite your girlfriends over and then you're like, burr, 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 boy, bye. there's a boy and you say goodbye. But that has nothing to do with my life. There's no girlfriends, my girlfriend. There's no boy. It's just a mutually shared group of non-binary people. Just a quorum of they's who can see both sides. <laughs> and there is no song about that. Yet. I feel like I was meeting with a divorce lawyer. That person was asking me, what about kids? Kids factor into this? Are you out of your mind? I said, we couldn't afford to buy kids. <laughs> this is 90% about pet visitation. I <laughs> swear to God, I swear to God, every queer couple I know who has split is dealing with an elaborate and court-mandated pet visitation schedule. <laughs> if there was a way for GPS to indicate this, you would see most traffic in every major city is just used stick shift Subarus. Carting dogs with hyphenated last names back and forth between vegetarian restaurants. We are messing with your cities and it is not gonna stop. I'm Cameron Esposito, thank you so much.